effectively for HMP data set, and he said it's impossible. So you just try to, you just wish to, you will get a more context, more longer context. So you don't even bother to try to get like a complete genome, a few of them. So you just try to get as many long contexts as possible within reasonable time, using reasonable uh, computational resources. And gene prediction, so if you have very long context, it doesn't matter, you can use whatever you want. But as I said, probably like 50% of reads cannot be assembled. It's quite, uh, it's, it's very common that 50% of the reads in a metagenomic data set cannot be assembled. So you, you, so you will have so many short reads. You can, you still want to do something for those short reads. The one problem is that can, can you predict, for example, proteins, uh, protein uh, uh, fragments from those short reads. So uh, it's a still a problem. So it's really something new. I think uh, it's a new problem so because you have never. So there are two groups. One group try to uh, map all those reads to the reference genomes. For those ones, you can do, but uh, but you will still have a lot of genomes that you don't know. So yeah, you can still do that. The the the. the most of the cases, you will still have a lot of uh, short reads that you don't know. You cannot map them onto the known species. You cannot assemble them into context. So you still have a lot of those short reads. But actually, many, I really use a lot too much time. But, uh, but actually, many groups, they just, they just uh, try to uh, uh, predict the functions. Just, u just use the short reads. They don't even bother to do assembly. So if you read papers, there are quite a, some papers just based on an annotation using short reads. No context, no assembly. So, but definitely one, that's uh, one of the problems when you try to annotate those short reads, you just try to uh, predict the protein or protein fragments from those short reads. And it's difficult, as I said, the signal is not really strong. So if you have entire, you have long context, or you have whole genomes, probably it's easier to do the gene prediction. But if you short read, probably uh, it's hard. And also they have sequence errors. So if there are sequence errors, they will uh, mess up with the frames. So then you cannot really do gene prediction. And function prediction is really largely limited to, uh, to those uh, similarity search-based methods so far. And the BLAST is the one, is the method that's often used because it's fast enough, but it's still not enough uh, for the HMP. So HMP, um, uh, I think the, all the similarity search is done in Wash U. And, uh, and they have to have used some uh, uh, software that's faster than BLAST, that a thousand times faster than BLAST from a company for, for that job because they claim they have a, a supercomputer cluster with like thousands of CPUs, and if they run BLAST, and to, to BLAST all those reads against NR database will take for 40 years. So that's the reason they don't go, go with that BLAST search. They, uh, they, they get, uh, I think it's called mBLAST or whatever. So that's really a software from the company. So uh, it's about like, a, they call it, the claim is about a thousand times faster than plus. But I don't really know because it's co uh, it's, it's commercial software. <laughs> and yeah, but I, don't, I, I really want to say what's the performance. I mean, if you definitely you can come up with something that's like ten, a thousand times faster or even faster than that, but you need to, uh, uh, when you talk about the specific or sensitivity, you don't know. Usually faster ones will miss a lot of those, uh, not so similar ones. And the, another is the binning of metagenomic sequences. The meaning of binning is that uh, even though you may not be able to assemble uh, individual genomes uh, from a mixture of DNAs, but if you can uh, uh, cluster those reads from the same species in one cluster so that you can uh, do something or you can uh, uh, do something from there. So if you can do that. So this is just some interesting problem uh, in metagenomics. And there are some interesting methodology development 
especially a few years ago, there are quite a few uh, new methods coming out just for that purpose to bring the metagenomic sequences hopefully into into species. But I think uh, uh, again the practical values is not really clear. <laughs> so if you read papers, especially those uh, large uh, metagenomics papers, you don't really say that this theming is used, or in any sense. But if you really you get already get a context, you can do theming. So big context, you can try to classify uh, context from one species into a, a bean so that you know they are from the same species. Because if you have long context, very long context, they have enough features for you uh, to classify them into species. And of course, we need to compare uh, whatever we learn, like uh, proof of families, uh, uh, pathways from different uh, environments. We want to com compare if like this pathway or this function is enriched in this environment. But there's still a lot of problems because, uh, because again, the, the data is incomplete and the reads are short, so that the annotation are not perfect. You will get a lot of artifacts here if you are not very careful about uh, the analysis you are, you are doing. So but definitely it will, it will be very interesting if you can uh, model or you can predict the interaction between different microbial organisms within one environment or uh, how those uh, bacteria in interact with the environment. Or the, if it's uh, animal related, it will be how those bac uh, bacteria interact with the uh, animal host, like uh, how the uh, human gut microbial organism interact with human. So those will be very interesting uh, topics to explore once we clean up <laughs> how to analyze those short reads. So, um, Megan, I just want to mention a couple of uh, very interesting ones. I will not take long, I think. Um, Megan is um, uh, a software which was first proposed to classify reads here, not only 16x, but all the reads into different taxonomic groups. Using short reads, all the short reads. So I will. Sh um, it uses the lowest common ancestor algorithm, so if one read is similar to multiple groups, so you will take the, 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 the lowest common ancestor of that several groups and use that one as the assignment, taxonomic assignment of the read. And the, but I think the author, the authors, they expand the functionality of that Megan software. And they have like Megan 2, 3, and 4, so you can do a like functional analysis or comparison uh, between multiple um, metagenomes. And also, I think the good thing about this is that they provide uh, visualization, very nice visualization of the differences and the com com commonalities. So this is the uh, lowest common ancestor algorithm used in Megan. So essentially, if you have a read that's similar to uh, these three, uh, this, uh, this uh, to, to some sequence from these this three species, and probably under all the significant, all the similarities are significant, so you don't really know if it's lost here or that one or the other one. So you will just use the, the, the common ancestor of these three and use that rank as the taxonomic assignment of the read. And they can also do like a, a function, uh, uh, do the comparison at the function level, like in, including uh, uh, families or uh, pathways. I think this one they use the uh, pathways or what? Oh no, this one is just to com uh, just for a comparison of multiple uh, metagenomes. And also those those the right side will be all those assignments. And uh, for example, if this one. Uh, I don't know what's the color of this one. But if you found like uh, reads can be assigned to this species from one sample, then you will color that one, corresponding one. So this one, then you probably you can look at this, how similar these two environments are based on the uh, taxonomy. Or you can really look at the, 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 the other aspects, like the functions, pathways. So I think the Megan Ford, I think Megan Ford, they, you, they incorporate this gene ontology into this uh, uh, tree.
So uh, that's Megan, and uh, I will catch you use like 10 minutes, or you want me to stop? So okay? I'm okay. So I will just uh, just this one. So what we can learn from those uh, uh, metagenomic data sets? So this is just one one new uh, one new uh, uh, paper uh, from science, the nature of science. So uh, this is just one application. So what you can do with a metagenomic data set? So uh, the the authors they look they look for those uh, enzymes involved in uh, um, plant polysaccharide utilization. So especially they're very interested they're very interested in the uh, cellulase that will be involved in the degradation of cellul cellulose. So um, but you can see there are a lot of data here. They uh, they get like uh, 200 about 268 gigabase base. Uh, from Cal Roman, uh, the, the bacterial community in Cal Roman, because cow can digest those plants. And they found these many, um, these many enzymes uh, that have like carbohydrate uh, activity. So they are involved in somehow in those uh, process. So, but it does not mean mo all of them will have like commercial values, but at least they provide some uh, starting point. Yeah, so, <laughs> and also I guess this is a non-redundant set. But anyway, I think the, when you do metagenomics, you have a lot of data DNA sequences, but sometimes you can get something like this one, uh, 28,000 genes, something you're interested in, but, but from, 268 gigabase of DNA. So probably they just keep sequencing that sample. <laughs> and you can look for like antibiotic resistant genes for metagenomic sequences. And you can look at the adaption of those microbial or, um, organisms when the environment changes. And you can study, for example, the human impacts. Um, uh, on the uh, ocean microbial communities. And these are three resources. MGRAS, uh, it's, uh, I think it's the most commonly used one, and they have analyzed this many uh, data sets. So if you're interested in uh, a management data set, you can go there, and they have all the uh, original data sets, all the analysis data sets. Camera was actually um, initiated earlier than uh, MGRAST, but I think it's not as uh, active as MGRAST because uh, MGRAST, um, Volker Meyer is involved in uh, MGRAST and he's very active on that project. IMGM, I, <laughs> it's really uh, kind of small as compared to the other two. They only have several hundred uh, metagenomes. And it's really based on the uh, IMG, the integrated microbial genomes. So they just expand that one, extend that one into IMG M to the metagenomics. And I don't really think I will have, I will go through uh, the methods we have developed, but uh, we do, we're interested in uh, com, uh, coming up with new, new, new algorithms, new software so that we hopefully we can get better, we can get, uh, make more sense of those um, metagenomic sequences. So fragment scan, the one we developed for, um, for the gene predictions from short reads, from short reads, error prone reads. And this is really a new, a, a very new uh, work we have done. Um, we try to identify those CRISPR elements. So probably many of you don't know really uh, what CRISPR means, it's just, uh, uh, you can just consider that uh, a bacterial immunity system. So it has nothing to do with antibody, antigen, but it's really some mechanism that bacteria have to against the virus. Bacteria, they also need to fight against the virus. So those will be the uh, CRISPR elements. So uh, they have genes, cast genes, 
involved in this uh, pathway, the, uh, you can just consider those CRISPR elements. They are just repeat uh, spacer units. So those repeats will be uh, the DNA regions in the bacteria. And those, uh, the spacer sequences, are they are actually taken from virus. So when the virus invades uh, the bacteria, the bacteria will take in those uh, pieces from the virus genome and insert those uh, virus gene, uh, fragments into their genome. So, so later on, uh, um, RNA can be produced from those uh, repeat spacer units, and they, those uh, transcripts can guide, guide the fight against the virus. So it's a very interesting, very, very interesting uh, bacteria uh, immunity system. So, but the problem is that it's very hard to assemble those ones because you have so many repeats. So if you just do, you, you just run super novel, um, you cannot really annotate those um, repeats very well or those elements. So that's what we, we come up with target assembly approach for those uh, elements. So we will, um, we will try to fish out all those, uh, all those rates that contain some of those repeats. And then we just do assembly only on those uh, pulled uh, rates. So that's the reason we call it target assembly. So we, we the assembly targets at the CRISPR. So using the CRISP, uh, repeats as tags to fish out the rates. So by doing this, we can really assemble a lot, a lot better those uh, CRISPR uh, repeat spacer elements. So once we have the assemblies, we can use the spacers to do other types of analysis, we can look at the dynamics uh, of those spacers among different human individuals. And, uh, and one of the results shows that they're very dynamic. So uh, for example, in, in, uh, in one of your bacteria, uh, it has a set of spacers. The, if you have your sample sequence again in a couple of months, probably mo most of the spacers will be different. And that indicates new interaction between, for example, between the bacteria and the virus. So we can use those spacers to trace uh, the interaction between the virus and also the, the bacteria. And also that helps us to hopefully to, to investigate on the, for example, the viral exposure of human beings. But it's, it's just something very interesting and we have this a methodology published in that uh, it's accepting in plus genetics, but we're really looking forward to, ana to analyzing those spacers and try to figure out, uh, do something about the virus and the bacteria interaction uh, in human bodies. So something faster, but it's only like 150 times faster than blast. <laughs> Not close to a thousand, but at least we can guarantee it's, we don't, our method does not lose that much sensitivity. So yeah. we do get something from metagenomics, but uh, there are a lot of artifacts. Um, I did not mention too much of this work, but like the bias of 16S on a survey. So if you're not aware of this bias, you may uh, make uh, a misleading, at least misleading, you may have misleading conclusions. Or if you uh, 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 are not aware of the uh, annotations. Many of the annotations are not perfect, and you draw some coherence based on those annotations, then you will also make mistakes. So we did have a, a couple of publications <laughs> on those artifacts. So if you're interested, you can um, try to find our papers. But this is just a little review paper we have. To that's the title of the review, review paper we have. So if you're interested in the, the challenges uh, in, in analyzing metagenomic sequences, and if you're curious about the artifacts, uh, you please uh, uh, read that review article. And I'm free now uh, to take any questions. So people call like we need to do personalized, mm -hmm. personalized 
Yeah. That does not include only include the human genomes. Uh, consider the variations among different human genomes, but also the variations among your the other genome, the uh, um, microbiome yeah. genome. But I think it's still too far because uh, because of the huge variation you find uh, in the uh, in the microbial communi communities of, uh, among. Uh, uh, pop in, in the population, and also like uh, my community probably will be different, slightly different tomorrow as compared to today. So uh, it's very hard to get the information uh, if you have such large variation. But I think there are some uh, work out there indicating like uh, uh, some bacteria they are involved in this particular uh, disease, or some bacteria involved in the obesity. Some uh, um, uh, bacteria involved in the inflammation, whatever, uh, different types of uh, um, disease. So I think they will be useful, but I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Thank you.